Good day everyone and welcome to another vlog. In this vlog I get to show you a lot more of the throne room. Oh yeah! So in this particular one we are starting off with this chair and its final looks a lot better than this. It looks like this. And I'm very satisfied with that. Looks very cool, especially in the actual scene. It looks amazing. So I just want to show you what all the pots and harps and all that kind of stuff looks like together. So this is what everything looks like together. This is a stand to put the fire in so that Pharaoh can actually see um, at night. So that's one of the focuses of this week. You can see I moved the harp to stand on the pillar where it's supposed to be, move some of the pots around. I modeled this as scarab thing uh, at when was that? It was about Friday or over the weekend. I started on Friday and finished it over the weekend. Actually started with it last, yeah, last week, Friday, yeah. Uh, I also baked it um, because it was too high resolution to stick it in the scene and expect it to run well. So that's just a textured version. And of course the rest is uh, stuff you've seen from last week's vlog as well. So let's move on to the throne room. As you can see, there are some issues with this particular one. Um, after adding the buildings and textures and all that kind of stuff, I did notice that the pillars were kind of like, you know, the, the points getting pushed down. So I fixed that um, only like, yes, not yesterday, it was the day before yesterday. I specifically worked on trying to fix this. Um, there was also an issue on the other side where the two points come together so that it's a loopable texture, created these sort of jagged edges that you can see over here where the seam doesn't quite meet correctly. So that needed to be fixed as well. Now uh, these were not spe um, specially modeled pillars, new pillars at all, they weren't. Uh, these are just the, the same ones I used for the open court, like these exact same pillars. All I changed was the color of, of this and up here and that little block space up there and of course changed the main pillar area and stretched it very high so that it's it looks thinner. That's that's the best part to the best way to describe it. It looks thinner. Added this scarab thing in all the corners of course we have the vulture on the ceiling and there are some skylight type windows up there which you can see the sun shining through here. Pharaoh's throne gets to be in this spot right here so that he doesn't get direct sunlight in his face. Initially I couldn't understand why the the light wasn't coming into the space and um, God showed me that I had made the roof stretch so far over the windows that the sun couldn't get in. Now in in real life that means that you would pretty much have global illumination type of effect like you can see here but it would still be a very very dark space if that were the case so you do need some sunlight in the space to reflect and give you that sense of um, brightness okay here I added the throne just um, used this little cobra thing on his uh, crown placed it on the throne behind him or under him and it's both here you can see I already uh, made the tile texture. It's a fake marble, which is purely a, a cloud texture applied to the checkerboard texture. It's a it's a node texture. I can I'm going to show you the the way that looks in a second. I just want to show you a more clear example. There you go. So you can see it's nice and diagonal. Looks great on the chair. Creates that painted marble kind of feel to it. It's very, very cool. <laughs> of course, have to add the fanners at one point. So I'm only adding one fanner to the scene because I noticed that um, there's really no space for two. Unless I move the advisors around or something, which you will see in a short while. Uh, one thing that really made a big difference is moving the feathers to be part of the background area. This not only solves the the blending, but it also helps um, it not be outlined, but also get soft shadows. 
so that the feathers look even softer than they would have had they been on the freestyle side. Just a different angle, different angle. Okay, now here we started adding some furniture. Here you can see the chair I just talked about. When I first rendered it out, I, I noticed that the, the wood looked really black. And the reason was the, the pass index for the material of the wood was still set to the freestyle um, pass index, creating a black part like this. And because they were on the first layer, it created literally a black spot there. So it looked like these huge spiders sitting by the um, pillars. <laughs> it was ridiculous. As you can see, this was the fire pillar thing that I uh, showed you just now with a turntable view. This would not be a very practical way of dealing with fires this size in a space this big for two reasons. Uh, the primary reason is that people knock things over. You do not want to knock over a fire this size. Absolutely not. So this is these just had to go. They had to be suspended from the ceiling. It's a much more practical way to do it, and that's what I went for. Even if they had to climb a ladder to refill them, all that kind of stuff, it's still a better way to do it. So here you can see the fire added, and it's nighttime. Because you're not going to turn these on during the day, because it's just... I think the fumes would be too toxic. <laughs> so anyway, so this was uh, the first ad of that. And this was also a, a test animation to see how fast the fire moves. And initially it did move too fast. But I'm going to show you the animation where they actually move the correct speed. Now, of course, some might argue that it's still too fast. But if you come in from a distance, it's not distracting. It's not too fast. It's it's actually the right speed. I'm just going to play that again. And again. Fortunately, there's no loop button. I stand corrected. There is a loop button. So I'm just going to leave it like this. Now, there are a few issues with this method of creating fire, but this method of creating fire is not supposed to be used for like really large scale fires. This is truly for like campfires and that sort of thing. And I'm going to be showing you at the end of this video how to make this from scratch. So that's going to be awesome as well. But as you can see, this is a very cool way of working with it. The only things in this video having animation so far is of course the fire and the fanner in the background. I mean, with all this fire in the room, you better believe it's going to be quite warm. Having said that, this is um, considered like a desert area, so it might be really cold at night. Don't know. So let's get on to the next frame. Okay, here you can see I added some more characters and of course the pottery. And I did add two pillars next to Pharaoh so that they're or at least some form of light close to him. But you can see that it does not affect anything in this uh, particular segment. Still not, just added the advisors. And of course, uh, this little lady over there. And making sure his hand is properly on the pillar. <laughs> added the soldiers. Specifically, this one over here and two at the door. Here's the two at the door. This is the same uh, light source that shown on the wall. The uh, sun lamp. And here they actually have some light. But this was a lower sample. Um, sample rate. But I also did a video of this to show, or to see, sorry, to see what the uh, flickering of these fires would look like uh, as it runs, because I did add some noise to it just to create some variation. Do 
Yeah, I don't see much of a difference. The longer you look at it, the more you will notice it, but it's extraordinarily subtle. I might actually amplify that just so it's a bit stronger, but I don't know. I think it actually looks kind of cool as is. And of course, all the people standing around here, like the guard and this little lady over there and Pharaoh, everything will have at least some animation to it so that it doesn't just sit there. You know, it's absolutely unnecessary in 3D for something to be that static and inoperative. It really is. The only thing that would be static and inoperative would be the, the stuff that's over here, like the pottery and so on. Speaking of animations and stuff um i don't know why it came to mind but um this week specifically i thought about extra animations within the scene for example let's say the when the rod turns into a, a that serpent lizard thing that somebody would drop a pot, you know, one of the servants would drop a pot, or one would faint, or one would be running out, or something like that. You know, not the focus of the scene, but just some sort of um, realistic approach to it, um, or reaction to it. Reaction to it is a better word. Well, we'll see about that. Um, I, I definitely added that with um, Esther as well. It, it does make a difference. It really does make a difference. It makes your scene look more alive. For example, when one of the Chamberlains let Haman come into the king's chamber, the, the Chamberlain kept his eyes on Haman the whole time. You know, like a, in, a, in a suspicious kind of way. <laughs> now, there's no, there's no record of that, but that does not mean that people outside of that situation didn't move and were just static and just sitting there you know it's not it's not the way it worked so there these animations are definitely needed okay now i just want to show you that this method for fire is one that you can set up and you can reuse in different scenes so i use this also in esther as you can see over there and I've also used this in other verse images as well. Like this one, for example. But that's not the only thing. Um, as you can see here, I also use the same technique for the marble, but just to uh, simulate a, a reflective type of metal. And I also made another verse image where God first showed me this method to create that fake marble. And here it is. You can see it here on the tombstone's um, edge. Just a, a soft fake marble. Now, <laughs> initially when I made it, it was it was more of a serious image, but um, the, the head of the ministry uh, replied to me and he found it quite um, funny or humorous. And I was like, why would that be humorous? Uh, not to him, I just was thinking why would why would this be humorous and when I looked at it like let's say two or three weeks later I also giggled when I saw it so if you're interested in how to make this um, texture let me quickly show you what it looks like okay so here you can see we have a monkey and our orientation if you look at the rotation over here zero 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 this does not bode well for this technique because we want it to go like this at a diagonal angle. So let's just give it a noise texture and let me show you what it looks like right now. Let's go for clouds. Uh, generated and let's give it a color ramp so it's not pink. And generated, that's good. Let's get a frame around it. And hit rendered. Let's just smooth it out. Okay, now this is supposed to be very soft. And of course the texture does affect it. There we go. Okay, there you go. So you can have the, the you know, overall look so far. But let's say you want to get that 
thin line. If you do this, you get that. Do this, let's go for five again. You can see that it only runs diagonal, ah, not diagonal, um, up or down or left or right. And of course, across the face as well, if you choose to go with Z. But that's not the way we want to do it. So what you want to do is you want to go into tab, uh, edit mode, and you want to rotate it by 45 degrees. Uh, let's go with the Y axis. And of course, once on the Z axis as well, just so it goes across the face as well. Tab out. And rotate it back. 45 degrees and of course on the Y 45 degrees. Now if you check it out and you say say 5 you have it going across your object. Now obviously this is something you will only do after you have finished modeling your object not before otherwise it won't give you the best results. I think 5 is a bit too much. Let's go for 4 three and reduce the depth. Yeah. So that's just pretty much how it's done. It's, it's not a complicated setup. And of course you just color it and have fun. This is not the highest resolution texture. I have thought of possibly increasing it for the sake of the size of the pillar. But at the moment I'm quite at ease leaving it as it is because it's not the focal point you know it's not good to waste time on things that really will not be noticed in the long run so as you can see this is just the fire moving and this is just a fun animation just to highlight entering the uh, throne room from outside now going in, going past the guards, and walking in and speaking with Pharaoh. I really need to fix those shoulders. Okay, as I said, I would show you guys the material, ah, not the material, the texture for the uh, marble floor. It's not 100% marble, but you get the point. If you go Node Editor, make sure it's selected, set it to texture, and of course the marble tile floor texture is selected. It is a cloud texture given a slight difference between its two colors, light and dark. It's rotated and um, translated, just to give it that uh, sense of difference. Now it looks like one would be um, facing against the other, but it's literally just a reversal, so that there's no way for it to be the same on the same two tiles. It's just not gonna happen. That's why it's also translated which means just moved across the surface. And that is of course multiplied by the um, the wood textures, single wood texture, rotated, scaled, inverted, so that it's nice black and white. And then it's of course sharpened so that you get a thin little grout line. And that grout line is of course rotated and multiplied over itself and scaled to fit the checkerboard texture. So if you want to know what those numbers are, you know the correct scale um, for fitting over this, you can see that it is set to 0.889. And of course the wood texture is set to try. If it's not set to try, you're going to have to still move it up a little bit, but the scale will still apply, the 0.889.
Now you can also go for extra decimal spaces here, but it will visually round it while applying the extra decimal spaces that you put into it. So 0.889 is not necessarily the final number. It may be 0 0.8891, 0 0.8892, 0 0.8893, you know, that, that sort of thing. But that does not display here for some reason. Of course, it's sharpened heavily and rotated and multiplied over the checkerboard texture, which contains our tiles. Let me show you what that looks like without the grout texture applied to it. So you can see the, let me scale it up. Oh goodness, there we go. See, that's all it looks like. See absolutely no grout line. So if you added the grout line, Of course, I need to scale this up even more. Very slight difference. You can't really tell in this block because the resolution is too low, but it is there. And that is, of course, also normalized by 0 0.001. And another cool thing that um, God enabled me to do was to make it easy to turn it from nighttime to daytime. So all I need to do is remove the fire layer, which is this one, so that it just renders it out anyway. But it won't render anything, you know, because the layer is turned off. <laughs> so, yeah. And let's turn these lights off as well. So let's just get where they are under P for point lamps. And you can just turn those off and of course change the world colors to be desaturated. And of course brighter and bluer like that. And if you were to render that now, you would see that it's instant daylight if you turn the sun on the one thing I forgot was the hemi lights. I just want to do those quickly as well. Just need to change this um, orangey color to be white again. So desaturate that. Leave it on point two so it's nice and bright. And render that. Now, of course, I think the blue might be a little too blue. As you can see, it, it gets this kind of cold feeling to it. But as you can see, it's fairly simple to turn it from nighttime to daytime. Doesn't take a huge amount of effort. Now of course if you want to you can add a little bit of character by leaving the fires in. It's absolutely fine. I'm assuming that most of the indoor spaces uh, would be kind of dark because there weren't a lot of windows. The colonnades were very open but of course because of all the paint on the walls and so on it would be a darker area. Uh, just one thing to mention, the only reason that I can put this much into a scene is because I use particles for modeling, um, like the pillars, same pillar, and the fires are Alt-D and rotated, so they use the same object data, they're just rotated. And of course, these these are physically placed, you know, the, the fire stands, just the one here and the one on the other side. And... Of course, these pillars are particles, the chairs are particles. Uh, you can't see them right now, let me turn them on. But I added some tables as well. There we go. Added some tables and chairs as well on the other side of the pillars. So that when he has guests or whatever, and it's quite a lot of people, these tables can be moved or they can be there, or whatever the culture would be at the time. And of course these fire hangers are also particles. You can see that over here. 
So really use particles if you have large scenes. It increases memory usage, but it enables you to use almost unlimited. You're, you're only limited by the amount of memory that your computer has. So you can make incredibly, incredibly large scenes. And now we can get to the fire tutorial. Oh yeah! Since we don't need any lights in the scene, I'm just going to keep the smooth sun and reduce its smoothness. Same for the environment lighting. I'm just going to create a new layer so that we start with pretty much the default scene that all of you guys would have. Just turning off stuff that's absolutely not necessary. We will use compositing, but not immediately. And of course, 30 frames per second. Don't need the monkeys. Uh, we can keep the plane because, I mean, come on. And move the sun out. Oh, not the sun, the camera. Why do you call it a sun? I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so let's add a cylinder. This is going to be our fire object. You can delete the top face and the bottom face. And let's add a seam. Control E, mark seam. And go into whatever view you prefer. Make sure it's in tab, you know, edit mode. Press U and cylinder projection. Go into your UV image editor, make sure that it's nice and aligned, which it is. Go back here. And now we get to subdivide it. Now I don't encourage you to over subdivide this thing because we are going to be able to add subdivision later for bigger fires. So what I would consider you, uh, what I would encourage you to do is to think of this as a candle flame in terms of physical geometry. So I think going for something like this will do. It's not entirely candle flame, but it's close enough. Now this will be our top of the flame. So can just shrink it in. Let's just get the, let's go for root. No, not root, sharp. Yeah, let's go for sharp. We're going to collapse it in a second, but collapsing it when it's that sharp is just not, not a good idea. And of course it has to be lower end over here. Now we can collapse them. Alt M, collapse. Alt M and collapse. That should do it. If you want to, you can take this down a little further. Just remember, everything you do with the physical shape right now will affect your unwrapping. Okay, let's just make this smooth. And let's call this fire. And the material is, of course, very simple. Fire, and you can set it to a red. You have to pick your darkest shade in your fire for this color, your diffuse color. So I'm going for this really striking red, you know, fire, fire engine red. Make it shadeless. You have to add transparency because we're going to have to let it fade out to the top. Of course, full oversampling. So it's nice and smooth. Let's give it its own pass index. Let's make it like 10. It's not going to receive shadows, no auto ray bias, and it's certainly not going to cast any shadows. Now we have a few textures that we need here. So I'm just adding a few slots in here, unmarking them. Now the first one will be our biggest displacement. So let's call this um, large displacement. And the second one will be small displacement. 
And the third one will be our normal color. And the fourth one will be alpha. Okay, so let's take our large displacement. I, all, I use cloud textures for pretty much everything except for the alpha and the normal. So if you want to, you can do this so long. So it's nice and sorted. Okay, the large displacement uses the F2 minus F1. And it's set to 0.5. Let's just get a render here. I just want to make sure it is actually visible. <laughs> so for the moment, just turn that off. So it's set to 0.5. Depth of depth of 2, as it is per default. And of course, your displacement is set to 1. Normal set to 0. And your color is set to zip. Because you, the, we, we don't want the color affecting this. Now, in order for it to go up, your Y value has to go down. So you can um, simply insert a single keyframe. And just take it down by, say, minus... Let's start with minus 1. Uh, go into the graph editor, we just want to make sure that this extrapolates. So that it can continue indefinitely, so you don't have to keep an eye on it. Let's shrink the focus area a bit. Okay, I think we need more geometry to really see what this will look like. Yeah, I think you can move a little faster than that. I mean, this is the large displacement. It's supposed to go faster. Let's go for minus four. Replace single keyframe. I think it may move a little bit too fast. Uh, we can just leave it as is. If it's too fast, you can see that in the render and you can just slow it down. It's not the end of the world. I do want to reduce the amount of normal after adding the smaller one. Just want to check that its scale is... Yeah, its scale is set to 1. That's good. Okay, let's leave that on and do our second displacement, our small displacement. Then leave this on one. Of course we do need normal and we need displacement. Let's set this to be about 0.5 so that when it moves and of course color has to be turned off. Same situation again, using Y, insert single keyframe, but this one does have to move slower. So instead of minus 4, I'm going to set this one to minus 2. Insert single keyframe. Same story with the graph editor. Channel extrapolation, linear, so that it doesn't stop. You know, a small displacement moves slower, and the fire has to be loopable, you know, for lack of a better term. It has to continue moving. Okay, so this looks nice. Let's give it some color. 
You leave it on horizontal, set the coordinates to normal, and it's ZYZ, so that it faces the camera, like that. You set it to constant, and you just give it a little bit of yellow over here. Can make it slightly more orange. Now, obviously, you, you can feel free to add a little bit more punch to it by making this orange and adding yellow. In there. So as you can see, it moves. Okay. Let's turn our large displacement back on and reduce our small displacement. I'm going to go for 0.25. And on the large displacement, I'm going to go for 0.5. I think 0.5 is a little bit much. Let's go for 0.25. Let's go for 0.4. It's just something you have to eyeball, you know. You're going to adjust it for pretty much every project that you use it in. Okay, I want to get rid of the um, orange because I think it's excessive. That's fine. And of course, we have to get our transparency going as well. So just make it transparent. Create an alpha texture over here, set it to vertical. And of course, never forgetting alpha. Flip that around. Let's clear the top. Let's give it some fade out. Something like that. So now if you look at it, it continues moving. Okay, that's excellent. So let's put this down on the ground, like that. And give it a light source, give it a point lamp. Now, because this thing doesn't cast any shadows, you do need to give it a light source inside of it so that it actually does create shadows with other objects. You can place it just in the middle over there where the light would be the most intense, logically, not necessarily accurately. And set it to be a reddish orange color. And let's give that a render view. I think we can make it a little stronger than that. Let's make it like three. Okay. Now we have to move this to a separate layer. It cannot be with our other objects. Unless, of course, you only separate it out for the compositing, then it can be there. But this is purely for the compositing. So I'm going to place it on a different layer. Let's place it on a second layer. Okay, that's good. Let's call this fire layer. Let's use this one to give us a material index. We don't need Z, don't need H, don't need strand, don't need halo. We do need the Z transparency, but we don't need the sky. Don't need environment line, ambient occlusion, no emission, no shadows, no specularity, no indirect, no reflection, and no refraction. We have to make these renders as fast as possible. Fire layer is only this one, masking the first, so that if we do this, the fire does get cut off. You know, like that. And the render layer itself is only this. 
and that should do it so let's save that okay that's cool going to the compositor after rendering let's just see what the camera sees yeah that's cool just for effect let's make the background this blackish blue color and hit render and that's the fire and that is our render layer so going to the compositor I'm going to delete everything and I'm going to start from scratch. Okay, now if you look at the fire layer just like this, you can see it's just that. But this is not enough. We need to alpha over it, over our normal texture over here. So you can just say alpha for the mix place that in there and of course that over there and I did it in the wrong order <laughs> you just need to fix it if that's the case and now all we need to do is just blur this and add it over this image this new mix so say add filter blur I, I blur twice usually one very large and one very small so you can keep it on fast Gaussian and let's set it to one. Take another one and set this to five or 10. Let's start with five. I've no idea why I used material index. It's absolutely pointless in this case. Let's just get a view of this. Let's just add it and see what it does. I'm going to add it individually so that it's not so uncontrollable. I think we can reduce the normal colors as well. Like I say, I, I, I'm going to keep saying this, you know, you just have to tinker with it and see what results you get that you really do enjoy and that you really find cool. I'm just going to turn on compositing here so you can actually see something. Okay, that looks fine. And of course, adding the final one, setting it to two so that the fire is nice and bright. Uh, one thing I do add um, sometimes is something to just distort the alpha so that it's not just such a cutoff point and that is only a cloud texture. Uh, let's call this alpha distortion. It's just a cloud texture. Of course, the X would be like two or three, so it's nice and stretched. Let's make this one 1.5. And that would just be set to warp, about 0.3 or so. See what that, oh goodness, no composite node. There we go. And let's see what that looks like. Mm, I think we should go for point two. <laughs> and bring it down some. So I'm going to get a nice sharp look of it. Okay, now we have some fire. 
I just want to up this a little bit again. Just so it has a little bit more of a pointy edge to it. You know, more campfire-esque. Okay. Something like that. And there you have a campfire. So now I'm just going to stick some cylinders in underneath there to fake some wood. Okay, and I'm just going to adjust a few things. Let's just be a little creative, hide that for a moment and give these a little bit of a material. Okay, something like that, let's see that. Oh, one issue is the point lamp is a little too low at the moment, so it has to be above the logs to fit the fire. I'm just going to add a few Suzannes in the sand. Now, obviously, fires tend to have a bit of a soft light to them, so you can always give a little bit of softness to your lamp over here by giving it like seven samples, soft size of about five, threshold of one, so that it uses the minimum samples. I think soft size of five is a bit intense, so let's go for, uh, say about two. Okay, that's cool. Let's make that our only light source by deleting the Hemis, or well, not deleting them, but just muting them. And of course, the sun lamp. Campfire, oh yeah. Now, of course, you can add particles and all sorts of other stuff and make it like really spectacular. But for the most part, this would pretty much be your fire. What you can do is you can move your light source by adding procedural noise to it. If you keyframe it, you can add some noise to it. You can, of course, add some noise to your energy over here to create variation as the fire moves so that the, the brightness would flicker. And I'm just gonna render this out and that would be the result of the tutorial. I hope you can use this in your projects in the future, possibly even today, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, just know that you can use this type of fire for candles, for campfires, for, um, I don't remember what you call them, torches, you can use it for torches, um, and that sort of thing. So um, I hope this blesses you guys, have an awesome day, have a great one, and God bless you.